Hey everybody, Mr. J here. Today we are going to crash course the 11 body systems in human anatomy and physiology. Before we do that, I want to tell you a story. I want you to think back to your worst teacher you have ever had. Okay, you have them in mind? Because I have one just burned, seared in my mind forever, and her name was Dr. Minns. She was very cruel because this was during COVID, right? So we were all online. I was doing an online degree. And every time I hopped on the Zoom, she said, quick, you have 30 seconds. Name every single body system there is. So every single organ system in the human body, ready, get set, go. And I had 30 seconds. I had to name all 11 and 30 seconds, no notes, no nothing. And it stressed me the heck out. But what I got from that class is in order to remember the 11 body systems, use the acronym Cruel Dr. Mins. Each letter corresponds with one of the 11 organ systems. And we're gonna go through them today, really quickly talk about the anatomy, the structures, as well as the physiology, the functions, what do they do? So let's start with C and we'll roll through them all. So first off, C, cardiovascular system. Cardio means heart, vascular means vessels. So we're talking about the heart and the blood vessels of the body, specifically the arteries, the veins, the capillaries, all those suckers, as well as the heart. Now the physiology, the why do we have it? It's to carry gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide throughout the body, nutrients and waste, literally to every cell of the body, okay? In order to feed the cells the nutrients they need to survive, they have to go through these vessels, okay? So incredibly important, the heart's pumping that nutrient-rich blood um, to the body tissues, as well as transporting it to the lungs eventually to be breathed out like carbon dioxide. R would be the respiratory system. I was just mentioning oxygen and carbon dioxide. Here's where it's gonna come in. So first off, the anatomy. The anatomy of the respiratory system are the lungs, the trachea, the nose, the pharynx. There's a lot of other structures basically from the oral cavity and the nasal, uh, nasal cavity all the way down to the trachea, which is here, the windpipe, as well as the lungs. It has bronchioles, it has alveoli. There's a lot of other structures in here. Now the function of it, why do we have lungs? It's to first off, get air cleaned, humidified, and warm, specifically through the nose. That's helping. Uh, there's things called turbinates that warm and clean, humidify the air before it gets to the lungs. But the goal of breathing is to bring in oxygen. Now, when the oxygen comes into the lungs, it'll diffuse across the uh, alveolar membranes and actually get into the bloodstream. So we're bringing in oxygen into the bloodstream from the lungs, and at the same time, carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the blood and go into the lungs to be breathed out, okay? That's the goal of the respiratory system. Big uh, physiological function is regulating blood pH as well, so the acidity level of your blood. We'll talk about that in different videos if you go on my channel. I've got plenty of those. U stands for urinary system. This uh, is also sometimes called the excretory system. I call it the urinary system. It deals with the kidneys, the ureters, the bladder, and the urethra. You have two kidneys normally, unless you donated one. Um, and the physiology, why do we have them? Well, the kidneys are the main filters of your blood. So as wastes get too high or solutes get too high, we can filter those suckers out and urinate it out. Now, at the same time, we also want to reabsorb some of the good stuff, right? So when you filter water, you don't take the water out. You keep the water in, but you get the bad stuff out. Hold on here for a second. All right, back here. So uh, the other thing I was saying is that we are reabsorbing things. So, so you don't want to take out all the water. You want to bring that back into whatever you're like drinking. If you're doing like sort of a water filter in your fridge, you want to keep the water there, right? So you don't want to expel it out and like lose it outside. You want to keep that. So same with your body. Sometimes you filter things out, but you actually want to keep it. So your kidneys amazingly can reabsorb it back into your bloodstream, back into your circulation. So that's pretty miraculous. Next one, E, is the endocrine system, literally meaning internal crying. Yes, internal crying. Now, the anatomy of these, I'll get to the crying thing in a second, um, there are several different glands dealing with the endocrine system, okay? So the main one you've probably heard of is the pituitary gland. You may have also heard of the adrenal glands, the thyroid glands, the, uh, tes the, the testes are technically glands too for endocrine functioning. So there's a lot of different glands. You can look up a list, it's a great list. Um, and they all do different things that deal with homeostasis, okay? Homeostasis is keeping those levels in your body uh, constant as much as you can. 
things like blood sugar, things like blood pressure, blood pH, those types of things have to stay in a set level. The way you communicate to the body to kind of adjust your physiology to keep those values the same and healthy um, is through hormones. Hormones are chemical messengers that are dumped into the blood by these different endocrine glands in order to alter cellular functioning. Okay, so for example, your pituitary gland sometimes secretes hormones that will then talk to your adrenal glands tells the adrenal glands to release something to help with a certain function of your body, okay? So hormones, just chemical messengers, that's all a part of the endocrine system. L is the lymphatic system. I like to think of the lymphatic system as a separate circulatory system for just fluid. Um, so the anatomy of the lymphatic system will be anything that starts with lymphatic, okay, or lymph. So things like lymph vessels, lymph nodes, as well as a couple uh, organs called the thymus and the spleen. Okay, so with the lymphatic system, the goal is basically to reclaim lost fluid. Now, what, what's lost fluid? Well, when your nutrients and fluid are delivered to your cells through the capillaries, the tiny little blood vessels, some of that fluid gets lost. Okay, it goes out of the blood vessels and it doesn't get back in. So it's just going to hang in there. So you need to reclaim that into circulation. But the way you do that is you dump it, say if that's a blood, uh, some fluid in the uh, body down in the foot it's actually going to get reclaimed by these lymphatic vessels, as you can see, which will come back, get checked at uh, these TSA checkpoints called lymph nodes to test for any bacteria, pathogens, dangerous things, before eventually coming back up and getting dumped into the bloodstream up in the subclavian vein area around here, okay? So it eventually gets back into circulation, but it also gets tested for nasty things. Um, so in essence, this is a big part of your immune system, okay? So if there were some bad things at those TSA checkpoints, the lymph nodes, your white blood cells will begin to migrate to different places to make sure that we mount a proper immune response to anything that could hurt us, okay? Um, and the spleen I mentioned as well, this is where your blood, your blood cells get recycled, okay? So they kind of get broken down and recycled so that we can make better blood cells because they get worn out after a while, okay? On to D, which is the digestive system, okay? So the anatomy of the digestive system, basically from mouth all the way to anus, uh, goes from mouth to esophagus, okay? Mouth to esophagus, the big tube, goes to your stomach, goes to your small and large intestines before leaving out through the anus. Now, at the same time, there's a bunch of accessory structures, okay? So structures outside of this tube that are going to help with the digestive system functions. Now, the goal of the digestive system, first and foremost, take food, break it up, chop it up into little bits, because then once they're small enough, we can bring them directly into our cells and directly into our bloodstream, okay? That's the main goal, break down and absorb. But then sometimes there's excess wastes or excess stuff that we don't need. That is going to be expelled through the large intestine, okay? But the main goal is break down and absorb for the digestive system. There is a bit of an immune component there too, um, so that your stomach is really acidic. It kills bacteria if it were to get into your stomach. And uh, it also regulates a lot of different functions. So for example, your pancreas is a huge uh, component of the digestive system, but it's an accessory structure. It produces enzymes that help break down some of that food. So there's a lot of different uh, components that I'm not talking about in this overview. The next R, we already went through respiratory, is the reproductive system, okay? So the anatomy of this would be the testes, the vas deferens, penis, et cetera, in the male, but then the female, the vagina, uterus, ovaries, those are all structures, okay? Why do we have them? Well, to make babies, obviously. Well, how do we make babies? Well, we have to produce what's called gametes, which are cells that have half the chromosome number. Because once you put them together, now you have the full chromosome number, which is a set of DNA. I haven't mentioned that. When you put those together, you have an embryo, which can fully develop into a human, okay? So I also wrote, you want it to be genetically diverse. The reason we have these organs is so that we can produce these gametes that are super diverse, that have a lot of different genes from your ancestors, right? So we can mix and match them. So when they come together, they're very genetically diverse, which gives the offspring the best possible chance to survive, okay? Last four, muscular system is the M. The anatomy, obviously, is your skeletal muscles. Um, so these are anything that attach to your bones, which would be like your biceps, your deltoid. You may have heard of tra trapezius, latissimus dorsi, those types of things. And the goal of your muscles, why do you have them? For movement, obviously, as well as for heat production. The reason your body is actually warmer than your external environment is because your muscles are constantly, constantly using up energy 
producing heat as a byproduct, keeping you pretty darn warm. Okay. So it's a muscular system. The eye is the integumentary system, which literally means a sheet on top of something. So the anatomy of this is obviously your skin, um, as well as your hair and nails, which are considered accessory structures of your integumentary system. Why do you have them? The physiology, mostly for protection from your external environment. For thermoregulation, you're insulated because of your skin, and you can also sweat if you get too warm. Your blood vessels can dilate or constrict if you're too hot or too cold, uh, respectively, as well as sensation. The, most of what we feel actually is felt through the skin. We have a lot of what's called sensory neurons, sensory receptors detecting different things that could be touching or crawling on our skin so we can uh, notice it, okay? Two more, nervous system is the N. So the anatomy of this is the brain and the spinal cord, but there are also a ton of sensory neurons that actually sit outside of it. Um, so I don't like to just confine it to brain and spinal cord. There's other neurons going basically everywhere as well. Um, and there's also glial cells. These mean glue. So they're glue cells that help uh, basically support different neurons, which are the base unit of the nervous system. They're the ones who send signals. And the physiology is likewise. So um, sending signals constantly, whether it's a sensory signal, like something that you're perceiving, um, or something that you are doing. So anytime you move, it's a motor neuron talking to your muscles to move, okay? So you're integrating these uh, sensory and motor things but there's also a big uh, component of homeostasis in this. So your brain and spinal cord can conduct reflexes. Um, it can alter cell functioning to maintain homeostasis in a whole lot of ways. So for example, when your sweat glands start sweating, that's because the nervous system sent a signal to your sweat glands to say, hey, start sweating, you're too warm, okay? So big component of homeostasis. The last one is the skeletal system, okay? These are all your bones, all 206 of them. If you're a fully functioning human, adult, um, I'm hoping there's probably no babies here because they'd have more bones than us. Um, but what's the anatomy of them? Your bones, the cartilage, and any connective tissue, tissue associated with it. And the goal of the bones, there's actually a lot, of, a lot of functions for the bones, obviously for support, okay, supporting our bodies upright, um, obviously for protection. So you have bones around your brain, bones around your heart and your internal organs. Uh, so protecting those your muscle attachments, so bones attached to muscles through tendons, okay, so they keep them uh, stable, as well as bones connect to bones through ligaments. Um, and then finally, the last two is blood cell production. Your blood cells are actually made in your flat bones specifically, so like your ilium, your sternum, um, other places of your body, as well as calcium storage. You probably don't know this, but calcium is a very important thing. Anytime you think, anytime you move, there's calcium moving in and out of cells. So your bones are a great storage place, a storage unit essentially for calcium in case it gets too low, all right? Wonderful, those are the 11 organ systems. Remember, cruel, doctor, mins, you can memorize all 11 very quickly. And those are the anatomy and physiology of all the organ systems. Thanks for watching, hope this is helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe if this was helpful to you.